Sri Lanka is running out of food, medicine, gas, and money, but the tourists just keep coming. Sri Lanka is experiencing its worst economic crisis. Grocery store shelves are empty, medicine is running out, and people are waiting hours to get gas. By April this year, Sri Lankans were taking to the streets to protest soaring prices, food and gas shortages. As soon as I landed there, the airport had so many foreigners, it seemed all normal, a tourist said. While the media kept showing all the protests, I saw nothing except a handful of people in Colombo. The whole place was very calm. Even as the country buckles under the weight of its worst economic crisis on record, tourists continue to flock to Sri Lanka. While photos from the capital show the burned-out shells of cars and buses toppled over into lakes, international visitors continue to fly in, hoping to take advantage of a cheap tourism market still in post-pandemic recovery mode. In April, the Sri Lankan rupee hit a record low, food, medicine, and gas are in short supply, and the country is seeing rolling blackouts. On May 10, the government ordered troops to shoot anyone on site if they were seen destroying property. And still, the tourists just keep coming. The island nation off the southeastern tip of India is home to 22 million people. With its white sand beaches, temple ruins, and tea plantations, it draws in tourists searching for adventure, spirituality, and off-the-beaten-path itineraries. The country's tourism scene had been on a steady, decade-long upward trend that culminated in 2.5 million internationals' arrivals in 2018. In 2019, before the pandemic, travel and tourism accounted for 12% of Sri Lanka's GDP. But on Easter Sunday in April 2019, coordinated attacks carried out by suicide bombers across the country killed more than 250 people. In the immediate aftermath of the attacks, international arrivals to the country dropped by as much as 70%. Arrivals in 2019 fell to 2 million and plummeted to barely more than half a million in 2020 as the pandemic gripped the world, per the World Bank. The country's dependent relationship with tourism, as evidenced by authorities' interaction with travelers, is still on display in the current crisis. Now, as many countries across the globe reopen their borders and reap the financial benefits of welcoming back tourists, Sri Lanka is facing a fresh crisis. With its foreign reserves at a record low, the country is on the brink of bankruptcy, and the economic crisis has become a political crisis. The country's leadership has declared a state of emergency twice since the beginning of April. Sri Lanka is also facing a food crisis, with imports down and domestically grown food on a decline, thanks to a fertilizer ban. On May 14, Ranil Wickremesinghe, the newly elected Prime Minister, told the BBC he would ensure families get three meals a day, but also said the crisis was going to get worse before it got better. Three days later, he said the country was down to its last day of gasoline. Every place I ate had something crossed off their menu that they couldn't provide because they couldn't get the food imported, a tourist said. At a nice Japanese restaurant at Golf Face Mall, they had no liquor and no meats with the exception of chicken. A couple of tourists rented a tuk-tuk for the entirety of their trip. While gas lines can stretch kilometers long, Todd said locals keep helping them out. In the central town of Dambala, the owner of a closed garage gave them fuel out of his own car, elsewhere, they bought five liters off a local man who had some gas to spare. Another time, a garage that was closed had a small amount so they let us fill up, Todd said. Within minutes, hundreds of people started queuing when they saw us filling up. The owner closed up again and told everyone, no more fuel. Kumara, a tuk-tuk driver, said that having tourists in his car is one of the only ways he has a shot at getting gas or getting through protester-blocked roads. When I have tourists in my car, they give me a chance, every place in Sri Lanka, but only when tourists in my car. If I go alone, they don't give me a chance. Sashantha Lake Priya, a Sri Lankan who described himself as a full-time traveler, said he spent as much as six hours waiting in gas lines, in some cases, despite waiting in line for a long time, there were times when I finally had to go home without gas or fuel. Even so, Lake Priya said he was really happy to see tourists in Sri Lanka right now, currently we are facing lack of foreign reserves, and tourism will help us to raise them again.